Okay, can everybody see the PowerPoint presentation? Yes, we can. All right, very good. Uh, good morning. My name is Michael Smith, and I am from the Kyoto University of Advanced Science International Office. I'm one of the admissions officers who helps students from around the world come and study here in Kyoto, Japan. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about the city of Kyoto and the country of Japan and studying abroad in Japan. And I'm going to share with you a little bit of information as well about our university and what kind of opportunities we can offer international students who want to study here in Kyoto with us. So uh, Michael, just uh, share your camera if you wish. Sure, just a second. Um, how's that? Can you see me? Yes. OK, uh, let's go ahead and dive on in then. So. First of all, I'm going to start off by showing you a video clip that was produced by our city of Kyoto uh, that was actually meant for international students and people who want to come and visit our city. So some of the sights and sounds of our city first to get a feel for what it's like. The sun sets bright and pain across the sky canvas panoramic scroll across the horizon cinematic stanzas Stargaze after the crimson hues in the giant stargate we stroll through. Understand this. Echoes of the past ring clear in the present. Complex of the modern day in tradition. Slow motion feel to our mission. Everywhere you look, the buildings talk, listen. Remember when you play with mirrors as a kid and the fractal patterns appeared and it felt as if you peeked into another world. Like awakening in a lucid dream and you walk to the castle at dusk as you enter it, wipe away the dust of the everyday stress from flipping the channels. Step past the sliding panels, greedy by tigers, white graffiti burners. While me on burst, mobilizing metamorphosis, right in front of my eyes. So I ran up a flight of stairs with lanterns at the corner of an alleyway. Wait, when I turned, saw a woman with class, I got to my time travel. Set of a hand, music to my brain cell, sparked a melody that I could foretell. As a lecture case, wondering if for me to get lights popped up in the maze of the city. And the portal lies with mere mortals. You step into the fold with floating petals. Pitch fly, but fly fishing in the river. Kindly around with the wind makes you shiver. Similar to words chosen on the microphone. Children, hot scars on the stone. Priest, praise, and solid. Monotone flow and gratitude. The chanting instruments brought by the silk roads. The altar, the inner fate, the alternating souls. Symbolism bloom in family crest. Natural abstract manifest. Follow the rabbit down the deep hole. It can take you to places where narratives and detours. Teleport to the train station. Go play confetti on the floor. Trace the origin, legend has it. That the keeper of the king was a signal for the secret to be free. Climb to the rooftop. The guardian had a tower in the vortex full box. The cry was a fist and pitch, like the sound of a flute with tears. Hear us sing, peace. for watching. <laughs> so uh, again, the question is why Japan? You just got to see a video of a part of Japan, which is uh, Kyoto City, which is where our university is. But um, first of all, when people tend to think about Japan, if you're from the United States, you probably have some images already in your mind of what kind of country Japan is. Maybe you know that it's clean and that obviously it has lots of beautiful natural settings and historic buildings. It has a very unique culture, has a very unique language too, but um, it's also very big on industry. Uh, it's also a very powerful economy and they have a lot of high tech too, uh, which 
all ties into the themes of study at our university, which I'll introduce a little bit about today. Uh, once again, we were just looking at a video of Kyoto, but Kyoto is arguably one of Japan's most unique cities. Uh, as you can see here on the slide, we just took a look at some of these places in the video, but these are all located in Kyoto City. Uh, Kyoto City was the capital of Japan for a thousand years, so it's full of dozens and dozens of national and cultural treasures. Uh, they're all registered by international organizations as being pieces of uh, irreplaceable, uh, precious human cultural assets that uh, are open to the public for people to visit. Um, all of these are in Kyoto City, and you'd be able to visit these places and uh, frequently do a lot of tourism if you were studying in Kyoto City. But um, although Kyoto City is really famous for all of this beautiful nature and these historic buildings, Kyoto has always been a source of innovation as well. Um, over the last 1,000 years, things like pottery or lacquerware, uh, metallurgy, uh, textiles, art, weaving, all of this has in been incorporated into Kyoto's culture. And that culture has given birth to many, many famous companies, uh, some of which you might have already heard about. Um, this picture in the middle, by the way, this is actually the very first Japanese comic. This is called Choshu Giga. Uh, it was made about 150 years ago, but this is the very beginning of Japanese manga. And this was right, made right here in Kyoto City. Oh, I should also mention, um, uh, you probably know Edison. You've heard of him before and his uh, work on creating the very first light bulbs and working with things like uh, electricity and uh, providing electricity to various cities uh, around the world about 100 years ago during the Industrial Revolution. But the very first light bulb that he made was actually created using technology from Kyoto City. The, uh, the filament, which is the part that actually lights up inside of the old style light bulbs, which you can see here in the picture, this is actually made out of bamboo that came from Kyoto City. And so some scientists in Kyoto City were actually working with Edison to make the first light bulb. Uh, like I mentioned before about manga, so now Kyoto is also an international hub of pop culture, modern culture. Here in Kyoto City, we have Kyoto Animation, which is a very famous anime studio. They make a lot of art, movies, uh, films, we also have a lot of people making manga, like I said, uh, from a long time ago, historically, but also today. And we have a museum for manga here in Kyoto. So this is another place that's very popular for people to visit. And once again, I mentioned just a minute ago, but uh, there's lots and lots of companies that came from Kyoto uh, that are now very, very big, and they have offices all over the world. Um, one of these, obviously, I think uh, you probably have already heard of, Nintendo, um, very famous. The other companies that you see here, maybe if your mom or dad or your guardians work in a company that deals with robotics or computers, you might have heard of some of these before. Omron, uh, they're very big on sensors. ROM, Kyocera, they, they make parts for computers. They make LEDs and also NIDIC here, which I'm gonna be talking about a lot later. So uh, coming to the next part of my presentation, uh, we already talked a little bit about Japan and about Kyoto, and I went ahead and showed you one video because I think that uh, the video can do a much better job explaining our city and what's nice about it than what I can do just verbally explaining to you. So I actually wanna show you one more video which we made at our university to show off some of our new facilities at our university. Let's take a look at that. What's in Kyoto? What's KUAS? Kyoto, the old capital of Japan, 
is home to many of Japan's most important World Heritage Sites. Every year, 50 million tourists gather from all over the world to visit the 1,000-year-old city. While Kyoto is well known as a popular tourist attraction, the largest and most important economy in Kyoto is its manufacturing and technology sector. Electronic motors big and small, automated machinery, medical instruments, ceramics, and video games are just a few examples of the high-tech products produced in Kyoto. The businesses that create these products all hail from Kyoto, but they have grown to become some of the largest companies in the world. Situated at this crossroads of history, technology, culture, and nature is Kyoto University of Advanced Science, a new type of university that seeks to incorporate Kyoto's cultural wealth into international, state-of-the-art education. Completed in 2020, Kyoto University of Advanced Science's new engineering building was designed from scratch to provide the perfect learning environment. Here is a look at some of the facilities the building features. The first floor is occupied by an advanced workshop. This workshop is available for free to students 24 hours a day and provides the tools and materials to craft nearly anything imaginable. Elsewhere in the building, challenging research is being carried out every day. Next up is the library, which features lots of space for students to study alone or hold discussions with their classmates. In addition, the engineering building is connected to the International Dormitory, a super convenient way for new students to live on campus. The Faculty of Engineering has great facilities, but that's not all the school has to be proud of. The professors teaching at KUAS hail from all over the world and are specialists in a diverse range of fields including robotics, drones, AI, electric vehicles, computers, nanotechnology, and more. The goal of the Faculty of Engineering at KUAS is to raise street-smart global engineers. All lectures are held in English. In addition, all international engineering students are provided with intensive Japanese language courses. The Capstone Project the first of its kind in Japan is designed to pit teams of students against realistic challenges presented by over 50 real companies. By developing their problem solving and communication skills, students take their first step as street smart engineers. These unique features will allow KUAS graduates to work immediately anywhere in the world. KUAS represents a new model of university unlike Japan has ever seen. Join us at KUAS and be a street smart global engineer. Okay, uh, once again, thank you very much for watching that video with me. So I'm gonna go through a little bit more information in more detail about our university now, just to give you some facts. Uh, our university KUAS was founded 52 years ago in 1969, and we're a private university, and we're located in Kyoto City, in Kyoto Prefecture. Um, we have about 4,000 students right now, and of those, 130 international students are currently at the university, or they're going to join us this coming September. But the number of international students is expected to rapidly increase from this year because our brand new Faculty of Engineering just launched, and we're trying to get at least half of the students from overseas to come and join that program. So why was KUAS created? Um, I think all of you probably have something like a smartphone in your pocket, or maybe you have a Roomba at home, or maybe your parents drive an electric vehicle, but the fact is uh, there's just not enough engineers to create all of this new technology. Uh, that's not just the case in Japan, but it's the case in many, many countries. But here in Japan, especially, we just don't have enough young engineers to fill all the roles. In 2020, uh, last year, we had almost 
370,000 too few engineers. And in 10 more years, by 2030, we're expected to have almost 790,000 too few engineers. So you can see in just a few more years, we're gonna have almost a million jobs that somebody needs to do. We have this serious shortage of engineers, professionals who can do these kinds of tasks and create these new kinds of technology. Now, I'm gonna take you back in time and we're gonna go way back to the 1970s. And I'm going to introduce you to someone named Mr. Nagamori. Uh, this is him in this photograph. Uh, I'll let you try to find him in just a minute, but this is his business, which is called Nidec. And at the time when he first started this company, he started it with three friends and he started it in his backyard in a shed. Uh, he, he's kind of like the Bill Gates of Kyoto. And you'll see why in just a minute. Um, here's what he looks like now. <laughs> he doesn't have as much hair anymore, but he's in this picture somewhere. Can you tell which one is him? It's this guy right here. So NIDEC doesn't work in a shed anymore. It has a very, very big building here in Kyoto City. And it has other very big buildings, actually about 300 of them in 50 different countries all over the world now. And inside those buildings, about 140,000 people are working. It's one of the biggest companies uh, in Japan. It's getting to be one of the biggest companies in the world. At this point, they have more employees than Apple. And they are the biggest manufacturer of electric motors in the world. The reason why I'm talking about Mr. Nagamori is because he is the new chairman of Kyoto University of Advanced Science. So all of these motors that he is trying to make, uh, very, very small to very, very big motors, uh, hundreds and hundreds of different kinds, he needs engineers to make these motors, but he doesn't have enough engineers. And that's been a problem for his company for quite some time. And Mr. Nagamori has also talked in the past about how he's not really satisfied with the quality of engineers that are coming out of Japanese universities or even international universities, uh, even very famous prestigious universities. Uh, those graduates just aren't ready to immediately start working in the engineering field. Uh, they don't have enough training straight out of college. So after he hires them, he had to train them for several years before they can even begin to work. And because he had this problem, he decided that he was going to get involved in education. He was going to uh, become the leader of a university in Japan, which he did. He became the chairman of our university. And then he started investing in our university to create a brand new faculty of engineering. And he helped us build this brand new engineering building, which you just saw a couple of minutes ago in the video. Uh, this new building, which he created and all the equipment inside uh, in total cost about $120 million, but he helped us to create all of this and he provided the funding. And not only that, but he also helped us to bring together this team of international professors from all over the world who we are even now still increasing the number of to help teach all of our students in English. All of our professors speak English and all of our classes in engineering are taught in English. Our faculty of engineering is based around four different pillars. Like I just said, all of our classes at KUAS in our faculty of engineering are taught entirely in English. And our program is also very practical, which means that our students get a lot of hands-on training before they even graduate. We also have something called a capstone program, which prepares students for real world work because they'll get to work side by side with actual professionals working at real tech companies in Kyoto, like Nintendo or ROM or Kyocera or NIDEC. We also have intensive Japanese classes for all of our international students. So that means that if you come to KUAS to study as an engineer for the first two years of your program while you're here, you'll also be taking many, many classes in intensive Japanese language. So by the time you're a senior at KUAS, you should be able to do an internship 
in Japanese comfortably um, without it struggling to communicate. Or you might even want to go on and work at a Japanese company after you graduate. You'll be able to do that and you'll be able to use Japanese. And finally, our last pillar is our career support. So obviously we have very, very strong ties with Mr. Nagamori's company. And he really, really wants to hire talented young people coming out of KUAS. But we also have extensive career support uh, on campus to help students find the right job for them, whether they want to study in Japan or if they want to go back to their own country and work in the tech sector there, or if they want to go to another country still and work there for, say, oh, a Japanese company in Vietnam or in China or in Malaysia or something like that. Our engineering undergraduate program is really flexible. Uh, we have about 13 different pillars, uh, topics that students can learn about. At first, in the freshman and the sophomore year, everybody learns the basics together, but after that, you get to specialize in something that you want to learn about. So if you're interested in robotics, you can learn about robotics. If you want to learn about magnetics or uh, material engineering, uh, material design, you can do that. You can learn about uh, intelligent systems. Um, you can learn about machine learning, AI, uh, computer engineering. Uh, if you want to learn about uh, nanomachines, nanotechnology, we have that too. We have the equipment to learn about that and study that right here on campus. And if you want, you can even go on to our graduate program and study it further in depth. We have all the facilities necessary to do that right here in one building. Uh, now, I think the big question that a lot of American students are going to be asking, uh, especially right now uh, during the coronavirus pandemic when uh, not everybody has a lot of money necessarily, or maybe mom and dad have had problems uh, keeping work or something like that, how much is this gonna cost, right? So I think um, if you've already seen some other presentations from some other universities, maybe they talk a little bit about their tuition and how much it costs. Um, but typically I think you can expect in the United States or in Canada, uh, if you're paying for out of state tuition, you're probably gonna expect to pay at least $30,000 a year. And that probably won't include your room and board. But in Japan, and in Kyoto and at KUAS, you can typically expect your tuition to be a lot less. And you can also expect your cost of living to be a lot less. Assuming that you had to pay everything at Kyoto University of Advanced Science, um, you would be you know, paying your tuition and your cost of living by yourself or your parents would be helping you. You would be paying about $15,000 a year. And that's for your admission, your tuition, uh, any kind of insurance that you have to pay, and also your uh, room and board typically will be included in a figure like this. But here at KUAS, thankfully, because of the generous donations and financial support from Mr. Nagamori, we also have a lot of really generous scholarships, especially for really bright students, for example, from North America, who want to come and study engineering and learn Japanese and then work in a company in Kyoto in Japan. So uh, you can expect to receive anything from a 30% discount on our tuition all the way up to a free full ride, a 100% waiver of all tuition fees, plus a stipend to cover your living expenses, which is about $1,000 a month. So you would be looking at a free ride plus a little bit of money to cover anything like travel, uh, food, and so on. So uh, all students who apply to our programs here uh, for engineering, they would be able to apply to these scholarships. And you do not have to have a minimum GPA to apply for these. We don't have a minimum score on any kind of test, a standardized test. And we don't have any subject requirements either. You don't have to take this particular uh, course or anything like that. You just have to have a little bit of knowledge about math and physics in order to get into the program. Um, all you have to do is send your application document to us. And instead of worrying about what score you have, we're just going to look at you as a person 
Uh, we want to see what kind of achievements you have so far, but we also want to know most of all how passionate you are about engineering and what you want to do with that knowledge in the future to contribute to humanity. That's one of our most important uh, elements that we look at when we evaluate a student for our program and for scholarships. So uh, that was a little bit short and a little bit sweet, but uh, I would just like to say thank you for listening so far. Uh, once again, if you are interested in our program, please contact us at the email you see here on the screen, admission at kuas.acjp. And I think now what I would like to go ahead and do is open up the floor for anybody in chat who might have a question. So um, Marco, can we go ahead and see if anybody has a question? Yes, we can. You can use the Q&A and the uh, chat features. It looks like we have a question in the Q&A there. Do you see it? Uh, just a second. Yeah, looks like we do. Do we do nursing? Okay. Uh, hi, Sarah. Yes, at our, uh, at our, how can I, how can I answer this? I'm sorry. It's yes and no, at least at the moment. We do have a nursing program here at Kyoto University of Advanced Science. It's at the same campus as our engineering program. Um, in addition to that, we have some other faculties as well, I should mention. We have bioenvironmental science. We also have a humanities program and we have a business program as well. Um, and then we have health, which would be uh, the program where we have our nursing program. However, at the moment, our nursing program is only taught in Japanese. And the certification, which you would receive after you graduate from that program and take the National Japanese Nursing uh, Certification Test would be a certificate for you to work as a nurse in Japan. Um, I'm more of an engineering guy, as you can probably tell from my presentation. So I'm not exactly sure if you would be able to practice nursing in the United States or some other country if you had that certification. Um, and also, of course, because it is taught in Japanese right now, um, you would have to obviously understand Japanese from the get go if you wanted to apply to that program. However, however, Mr. Nagamori has uh, been very, very vocal uh, in the last couple of years about changing that program and all of the other programs that we have on campus. And I would say within the next three to five years, not only our engineering program, but all of our faculties on campus are going to be taught in English, or at least have a English track, which will run in parallel to our Japanese language track. So depending on when you want to go to college, uh, when you're planning to graduate from high school, if you're still in high school, or what your plans are for university, um, although it's not a immediate option available to you, you might be able to do nursing in English in Japan in the future at Kyoto University of Advanced Science. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, do we have anybody else who might wanna ask a question? It looks like we have uh, not Q and A, but we have somebody talking in the chat. Let me take a look at this. Ah, okay, that's Marco, <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, if anyone has any additional questions for Michael, now would be the time to ask. Otherwise, um, we can find Michael in the booth for another hour or so. Yes, I'm gonna be around for at least a little while longer. Uh, so if you want to talk to me, please come by and drop me a private message via chat and I can give you more information. Awesome. Do you have any maybe final thoughts for students who uh, are at the fair and um, are kind of looking for what they can take from the fair, like advice for the people who are uh, attending the fair? So um, I think uh, for some of you, at least, maybe this is not the only fair that you're going to be attending. Um, I know that when I was a college student uh, thinking about where I was gonna go for graduate school or back when I was in high school thinking about where I was going to go for college, um, I looked around a lot to see what kind of universities were available to me. Um, it wasn't all at my fingertips like it is now, but um, I recommend that you try to find out as much information 
about as many universities as possible to pick the best fit for you. Of course, I would be very happy if some of you come, uh, if some of you choose to come to Japan or Kyoto to study in the future. I think uh, studying abroad for your undergraduate program all four years is a very ambitious and brave thing to do. But uh, I think in the future, that will be something very valuable for you and people will see that as a sign of very strong character and of ambition in you and uh, it might be of advantage to you in the future in your career or privately or otherwise so definitely give it some thought uh, find as many universities as you can uh, learn about them and try to make the best choice you can based on what information is available good luck awesome We'll leave it there. Thank you so much, Michael, for the presentation. Um, and you can find him in his booth for the remainder of the fair. Yeah, thank you very much. And thank you very much, Marco. Have a good one. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.